Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about the Eternals news that dropped and a little bit of news regarding the Empire set, as well as answer quite a few listener questions. This is episode 379. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how six people. People think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dialage for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your order. Especially if you haven't bought anything on Cool Stuff Inc., you just want to kind of build up, because you'll get a discount. It's the only website I know that does this. The more you buy, the more you get a discount on singles, on sealed products, on all sorts of stuff. I love it. Yeah. That's why I love this website. Dang, level eight? Yeah. I didn't know we were dropping our power levels right now. Let me go check my cool stuff, Inc. power level. See where I'm at right now, dog. Over level seven. (sighs) Get little shield ID cards. You know, little level eight, coolstuffinc.com ID card. Let's you call in one Simeon or one (laughs) Calderness. Power action being your turn. It's not even being your turn anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's log in. What's my? I am also level eight. Dang. Yeah. How close are you to level nine, Simeon? Oh, that's the real question. That I I don't know off. off that's the, the top real, of my question. Head. Uh, real question. How close? Because level am, nine is like quite a. It's it's a lot. That's <laughs> it's quite a, a jump. Yeah. You've spent a lot of money it's to get doable. to level nine. Um, it is doable. doable. Um, so uh, I am. 13 percent progressed ah, to level nine i i am 46 percent level nine so, so i feel slightly better uh as level eight i don't know if i feel slightly better or worse now that i realize uh gosh that's that's a lot of money i've spent on this yeah, website you can see your total wow. to date spending yep which may or may not be uh, a positive for yeah, some people i almost wonder if it's bad for them to show you that because uh, looking at it it's like what have i done uh, yeah. especially recently what have i if done? i like to think of this in my over uh my hero clicks career i don't feel as bad but so you, basically you reach level nine once you've you've spent five thousand dollars um it yeah might not just be hero then, clicks. You could then you'll be, get five you know. percent off general products and that's the only way to get five percent off general products without using our code before that it's, it's the max is uh is four percent and that's for spending two thousand dollars so our code gets you five percent off everything and you don't even have to spend five thousand dollars to get there now of course singles and single minis uh can get up to fifteen percent off at its highest but even then so our code yeah, is you still only have great to spend so if, you, if you're buying five hundred dollars you already get yeah six percent off of singles once you hit that yeah. mark like maybe after that point, you don't need to use our code for singles anymore. But if you are getting uh, boosters, if you're getting starter sets uh, and anything else, obviously, because you can use it for because I mean, I've used our code a ton of times for getting just board games that I yeah. want to play. I don't know. About, I, don't, I know. I know. I know. Simeon likes to play normal board games. I like to play board games besides whatever. I shouldn't say Simeon likes to play normal board games. I've never seen him play a normal board game in my life. I don't know. Yeah, it's just these very strange a normal board game. Well, I would consider a normal board game something that makes you like. You know, like a bad board game. It's like Monopoly or like oh. Sorry. That would be a quote unquote normal board game. One for like the normies, you know? And then you go like you go up a tier in like board game level where it's like, it's okay, like the, well it's not uh, it's not normal. Iceberg. But it's, Is that where we're yeah, the board game it? iceberg. Yeah, Slightly exactly. under the water. Um, You've got things like Settlers of Catan. Like, yeah, and, something uh, like that. Like Sheriff Munchkin. Of Nottingham. Yeah. You know? yeah, Sheriff of Nottingham. Um, like code names. Maybe not even code names anymore. I don't know. But like something like that, you know, like and then and then it gets like deeper and it's like, oh betrayal. Arkham Horror. <laughs> Arkham Horror is way down there, actually. I shouldn't even say that. Yeah. Arkham's way down there. Um, and like stuff like that, you know, like those board games. Uh, but anyways, this is not a generic board game podcast. This is a podcast specifically about hero clicks. Now, many podcasts in the past have said they they blur the lines between casual and competitive. 
Personally, I think there is no podcast right now in the present, Simeon, that does that better than Dial H for Hero Clicks. Because right now, as I am sitting with you here, I am a 300 modern champion. I beat 12 people. <laughs> but still, a 300 modern champion uh, for my state, nonetheless. And I've also had great showings. We both had great showings at both Worlds, Nationals, in in teams, as well as last time, you know, out of 87 people, good, really good competitive players, I got in the top 16 uh, at a 300 modern event. And then I also barely win any of my casual nights. I maybe win one out of the three games I play because I build so casually when it's not... Uh, um, whatever, when it's not like crazy 300 modern, I build completely casually. And I've seen some of Simeon's builds. He likes to build a little wacky, ladies and gentlemen. He That's he true. builds some super casual stuff, and also he builds some out-of-the-box stuff where I'm like, you know, it. what is going on inside your head? And then it does the whole... And then I and then like you see inside the head, and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Now I understand why he is the way that he is. But all of that is just to say, ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first... Dial H for HeroClicks podcast. I want to apologize, first of all. Second of all, there's a link in the description of this podcast for our new player episode. If you're just getting started into the game of HeroClicks, give that a listen, and it'll give you a, a nice basis for starting off your HeroClicks career. I am joined, like always, in the studio by Simeon Bruce. Man, it took me a long time to yeah. say that. Unless I already said it, I am apparently. Uh, I but wasn't this before, Simeon. but here I am now. Get a load of this guy. He's like the opposite of me. He's got glasses. I sure try to be. And a beard. Yeah. I'm, I'm cultured. <laughs> and something else I could say that's mean, I guess. I, uh... I don't know. But he's, got, he's like a pretty cool guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't Bad think of that quick. many differences, to be you honest. Um... Uh, I shouldn't even say that. He's beaten quite a few times at Hero We But we've got a pretty good record <laughs> against each other. Um, but yeah, so... Ladies and gentlemen, Dial H for Hero Clicks, we like to start every single week off with what made us happy this week. Now, we are recording this a bit early. Normally, we record on Sundays. We're recording on a Friday right now. Simeon, what made you happy this week, my man? So what made me happy this week? Of course, it is uh, upcoming Labor Day. Um, so it'll be a long weekend. So I've got that to look forward to. Um, I've got another exciting weekend of posting a scoreboard score. So I'm actually going to try... Because uh, it seems like the Discord, the, our patrons in the Discord were kind of interested. I'm going to try to get my old, um, what do you call those little cameras that you strap to your head? I'm going to try and get oh, my, um, my, uh, GoPro, uh, yes. GoPro, uh, yes. I'm going to try go. and get that on, out of the box and see if it still works and if it's charged. And I might try and record uh, putting on my magnets because how do they work? I don't know. We might I don't know. Out. Uh, but yeah, what made me happy this week, other than those things, is I've gotten almost all of my packages of the things that I bought from X-Men Rise and Fall, and uh, it's a lot. It's uh, it's a lot. I, yeah. I bought exactly one super rare, and yeah. then the rest of it was uh, all generics, and yet somehow I still managed to spend close to two hundred dollars oh get a load of this oh, guy so much oh my gosh generics yeah it's a it's a problem because i'm definitely not gonna ever play this many but uh i have enough brood that if i ever want to play a brood team which i don't i've sp spoken on the podcast how i don't think they're that great uh, stealth with blades is not my favorite combo, but maybe I'll give it a try. Um, I am looking forward to playing some sort of massive team with the Madrix dupes and seeing how many I can get on a board at one time. Um, and then I just have way too many Sentinels. So hopefully once I actually get around to moving all my basement stuff around, I will have my painting table set up again and I might start... Uh, instead of sculpt swap, I might just do some generic paint, like repainting kind of stuff, because it'll be the same sculpt on the same dial. Yeah. I'll just just fine tune some of my sentinels, which is allowed. So, like, because obviously it'd be weird if it wasn't. Uh, HeroClix doesn't allow you to like cut and chop up any sculpts and glue like different things on or whatever. But you're allowed to like repaint the figures to your heart's content. They don't. They do not care. In fact, you know, obviously, if you know. Hero Clicks has the whole deep cuts line, so 
they're yeah. all for like painting minis. So that's cool. I like I like creative stuff yeah. like that. And WizKids has their new uh paint line coming out sometime. Are we gonna Ooh, the spruce? You're seeing the spruce based <laughs> miniatures paint line or whatever it is? Yeah, the, the spruce based uh, minis and I can't remember what type of paint it was, but they were partnering with Vallejo at one point, so I'm assuming it'll be Oh yes, similar one quality. Of my I don't know. Favorite hopefully. Italian eateries, Vallejo. Uh <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool, Simeon. I know I, I love getting things in the mail. And in fact, that's what made me happy this week as well. as well. I did just get my, I only bought a brick of Rise and Fall. I can't wait to do a unboxing for that on the YouTube channel. This will definitely be a destroy orientated unboxing. In fact, um, I, I plan on making no money back or selling or keeping many of these figures from this brick. I, I'm going to be honest. I much destroying the entire brick so if you want to see someone do that uh subscribe to the dial h for hero clicks youtube channel that should be up maybe sunday or monday uh this coming week so on labor day day maybe uh could be our big rise and fall unboxing um but what maybe the most happy sadly it was the same day i received one from ebay but uh the die cast captain america funko pop went back up on the uh, funko website and i saw the notification it literally said notification just now. And I was like, perfect. Went to the website, bought it, got it for $53. It sold out instantaneously the last time I tried to buy this diecast Funko Pop. And then a lot were going on eBay for like 130 150 And it was already a $50 like Funko Pop of all things, you know. But it's this really nice, clear, see-through box. It's heavy, you know, like... Because you can buy things that are expensive and they won't feel expensive. You know, like you can buy right now, you can go out and buy like a $300 Heroclix figure in like Birthday Cake Deadpool. Um, but he's, it's not going to feel expensive. It's going to just like be Pokemon. It's going to be cards. <laughs> any cards. Yeah. Don't feel expensive right? to me. But So, like, when I buy a Funko Pop, I know there are ones that are 400 something something dollars, right? But they're still going to be that cheap, like vinyl, whatever, and be really light. And this thing is only 50 bucks, but it feels expensive because it's die cast metal. You know, so I just I really I really enjoy die cast stuff like that when I buy action figures or statues or anything because they look nice. They they feel they feel nice. Like, that's just huge. Um, Yeah. So I was just stoked to get it. If if you're like anybody and you're like me where, you know, like a certain thing is going to release and you've got like, you know, people are going to try to snatch it up really quickly. There it's like people are like that, like tennis shoes, clothing drops. Um, apparently Arby's brand D and D dice who would have thunk, um, people are really competitive about trying to get like some internet drops like that. You know, uh, that's how I am with like some certain action figures that I know will sell out or like Funko pops, especially because those people are just rabid, just grabbing at everything. It's crazy. Um, so it felt good to get this for like 50 bucks. Now, sadly I bought one on eBay for 112, which was under the 130, $150 price. Um, but it, I just got it today. So now I have that one that I need to try to sell. Obviously, the price is now going to tank on this thing because they did just bring it back up for order. Um, so I'm going to try to sell that one. I just tried to return it to the uh, seller on eBay. I even wrote this really cool thing about like, hey, look, I got it to surprise my significant other. And they ended up buying one anyways. And since they already have one, I can't surprise them with it anymore for their birthday. And I wrote this pretty long message. Um, and as I'm saying this, I've received an email saying the request, uh, the return request was closed and they denied it. So very cool. Uh, so glad they did that. Um, nice. Obviously, they saw through my uh, elaborate lie uh, that was to uh, the fact that I obviously just got one for cheaper. Um, but if anybody wants one, uh, they are sold out on the website right now. So if you if you want one for one hundred and twelve dollars shipped, uh, I'll give it to you. Maybe even maybe even I'll, I might I might even take a loss on it. Maybe we'll see what happens. But anyways, that's what made me happy this week. I sure do love playing the uh, the game of trying to uh, you know get things cheaply and whatnot, which is yeah. fun. I, I like that. I Enjoy remember. It. Do you remember the the Super Nintendo uh, classic like mini? That came out yes, oh, used to do, boy, yeah. four years ago or something like that. What a time to be alive. So <laughs> I was working retail at the time. And so I managed to get one on one of like the few times, you know, they'd send us like five at a time. And there's websites that will track stuff like that. So people can be there and be like, hey, it said it, you, it said you guys got this stuff in. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we probably did. But we have to like unload the truck first. So 
no idea where it's at. That's um, uh yeah. I managed to get one fairly early on before it got like real oh. popular. Or whatever. Did one uh did one fall off the truck in the back there, Simeon, and you were able to get one no, early on? No, Is that no, what you no. mean? No. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no. It got to the floor. Um, oh, okay. Maybe, wow. Maybe what, got what a pushed guy. behind like a, a sales desk or something. In the so floor. have you ever? Okay, finish your story and then I'll, oh, okay. I'll chime in. <laughs> no, yeah. so this was before when they first released. This was like after they first released, but on like the second wave of releases. So people knew that they were like hard to get and like selling out and whatever. Uh, I managed to get one. I think it was 50 or $60 retail. And I just like kept it. So I just, I just wanted, well, I think I... Yeah, I just I was going to get it for one of my friends, but it doesn't matter. Um, I just ended up keeping it, and it was like two years later, I decided to finally open the thing because I was like, I don't know why I didn't. And then I saw recently that it's going for like double on eBay still. And so now I'm a little sad that I sold it or didn't sell it. I'm a little sad yeah. that I opened it because I could sell it for double. It makes some make a decent chunk of change make your money back yeah, um i don't know at the same time it's like is it even worth so it? cool yeah I mean, it's still something really like keep it keep it yeah that's that's how i am with, with a few things where i'm just like you know what i'll just keep it because it's cool so i also this week um the galactus has lab marvel legend figure got funded i know you saw a little bit about that on our discord um, it's a crazy, it's like 32 inch figure. Uh, it's crazy oh, tall for a Marvel dude, legend. Yeah. Um, and I, I really didn't want to buy it cause it's $400 for this action figure. Right. And I won't get it for over a year probably cause the Sentinel that happened around this time last year is just now shipping. Um, I didn't want to buy it, but I told myself if they got every single stretch goal, no matter what the stretch goals were, even if they sucked, I would buy Galactus because no matter what, that's going to be one of the nicest Marvel Legends they ever make, and it's more of an investment than it is something I actually want. Because just by the way Marvel Legends go up in price, and the fact that it was a HasLab, whatever else, I should be able to sell it here sometime in the future. And I, I'm this way with Lego sets too. Like I always kick myself nine times out of ten, I'll kick myself for not buying something than I will for buying something. So like. A long, like a while ago, Lego did like, you know, every quick bit of investment advice for anybody that wants to play really dumb investment games instead of doing stocks and they want to own things that take up ridiculous amounts of room in their house. Buy any Lego Star Wars set, any of the expensive ones, because once those are out of print, then give it like another five years. People are going to be like fiending for whatever version of the Millennium Falcon you have. <laughs> like yeah. it'll be worth so much. Like someone did a, a research study. Um, a research study, whatever. It was some quick thing, and I promise we'll get to Hero Clicks after this, guys. Sorry. Um, about the Lego Death Star that came out in like 2005 or something, and they checked out what it was worth in like 2015 or whenever, ten years after it was out of print. I don't know when that was. It had went up uh, over a hundred percent more than gold went up in the same Jeez. amount of time. So, like, and obviously. Uh, like so this is like three hundred dollars of Lego versus three hundred dollars of gold was worth more in ten years, uh, which is wild, it's crazy, you know? Um, so like that's just so that's so fun. And I think as nerds, it's more fun uh to invest in things that you maybe care about more. And this is this long thing where sh l let your wife listen to this episode and maybe she'll let you buy those three hundred dollar <laughs> yeah. hot toys. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. To man. be fair. <laughs> I do not like this is um, nerd based investments is what I'll call them um, can be pretty lucrative depending on like what you are into um, hero clicks for the most part is not one of those things. This yes, that's a big uh, will not yeah. age. It does not age well. Um, it is. So I've said this before. I don't know if I've said it on the podcast recently enough, but um Hero clicks is worth what you're going to get out of it. So if you think going to like a movie is worth it because you have like a fun two hours and you like watch something, you like, you have a good time. You see a movie that you wanted to see. You get like this experience that you wouldn't have if you didn't go. If that is worth it to you, then hero clicks is like, that's how hero clicks is 
yeah. to me at least. Um, and it's not going to be the same to everyone, but definitely Heroclix is a, and it's a, it's an expense that you have to pay to have a good time, I guess. It's, um, yeah. It's something where you can like get some returns on it, depending on like, you know, maybe you buy some boosters and you get something that's worth something or get maybe lucky, you get really yeah. competitive and you win at worlds and you can like flip your winnings for money. But in the long run, uh, for the most, most consumers of the game, it is a slowly declining, uh, investment, which is it fine definitely because, is. yeah, because like the, the real value is like the, the fun and the friends that you get out of it as, along like, the way. The way I look into hero clicks it's is I try not to buy anything. I don't like play, you know, um, except of course, unless like a captain America figure, I just buy all of them regardless. But, uh, like black Vulcan, that was one of the few figures where it's like, I don't care about the character. Never seen an episode of super friends, but I know it's really, really good. And I know I'm going to go to a lot of 300 modern tournaments in the next two years. So I just dropped 50 bucks on black Vulcan, but He's going to be on every single base, pretty much every single sideline for any 300 modern team I build for the next two years. So at that point, it's sort of like a video game. Like I can always tell it's a good video game if for every dollar I play or I pay for that video game, I put in an hour. So basically a normal game, 60, 60 dollars, right? I want to put in at least 60 hours into that game. Cause then it's like, I'm just paying to play a dollar for an hour. And then that to me works out pretty well. You know, I think that's fine. So for hero clicks, I've definitely towed it around Black Vulcan uh, for more than 50 hours, I would imagine, uh, in the next however many years, right? Um, if we say one game is close to an hour. So oh, sure. there's there's some where you can be like, yeah, I can justify that or whatever. Um, and I'm okay with that. Like Black, you know, and that's just for any any character you think you're going to play a lot. Absolutely. Um, but of course, you can flip hero clicks if you buy a ton of pre release or a ton of whatever, a new set, and you just try to flip all the expensive figures. There's possibilities to do that and make money. I definitely, mm -hmm. with like Wonder Woman, the buy it by the case stuff, you easily could. Um, but we're getting off on a little bit of a tangent. So let's go ahead and talk about the news. Simeon, you're you're gonna have to. I've got no hype for this. I I don't care. You couldn't pay me to care. Um, but it, it would seem that somebody at Marvel decided of all the movies that are coming out, of all the TV shows that have come out this year. Hey, between so you Falcon like and Winter Soldier, Disney Plus shows. You like that what if stuff? That Loki will let me get you hyped for this brand new gravity yeah, feed go. it's got there all the go. characters that you know and love it's got all the things that you've been looking forward to it's called eternals so uh we've got characters like ajak druig mm. gilgamesh icarus kingo makari fastos cersei sprite <sighs> thena and that was it that's all of them Wow. Um, wow. So, yeah. Uh, man, I hope this movie is just so amazing that I it actually makes me want to buy these figures. Because just looking at the lineup, not super interested. But uh, So, th I listed off the 10 Eternals that are, I'm assuming, going to be the bulk of the set. Uh, the set list. So, I'll just read the... The quick description. It's going to be a 24 count countertop display featuring the 10 Eternals and their enemies. It says plural enemies from the big screen. The Deviants. Uh, the Eternals are ancient aliens who have been living on Earth for thousands of years and are reuniting to become the newest team in the MCU with an impulse friendly price point. Single figure foil packs are a great purchase for new or experienced players. Um, MSRP, of course, is going to be five dollars, four ninety nine. Used to be three ninety nine, but uh, larger sculpts. This will be the first gravity feed with larger sculpts, which is interesting. Um, so it says the Eternals movie countertop display featuring an array of figures and twenty three unique dials. So they've got eleven commons. I read ten of the likely commons. Uh, one of them will probably be a generic deviant. Uh, ten rares, again, 
there's 10 Eternals. So yeah, I feel yeah. like if it's really anything hope. like the previous movie sets, we'll have a <sighs> common not, and a though. rare of each one. I really hope it's not. Exactly really it's one not. enemy, and that's going to be the one common <laughs> that doesn't add up. Yeah, I could be wrong. It could be five commons or like, you know, maybe Druig, Gilgamesh, Icarus, whatever. Maybe those are the commons and then the other five are the rares. I'd be fine with that. No way of knowing yet, but uh, so, it just really does yeah. look right now from the box art alone. It looks like it's going to be double down on the all of the Eternals. And then two chases. Um, again, without knowing more about the movie, um, going off of just the box art, it's hard to say what the two chases could be. Um, but yeah, hopefully some interesting generics, though it so really does not my, look like My assumption for an Eternals uh, chase is... So if you follow lego at all we know we already know what the, all the lego eternal sets are so we got two different sets where it's like you're fighting some deviants whatever um then we got one set which is rise of the domo which is apparently the name of their ship it's a humongous dorito chip is their ship it's just a big triangle oh uh, yes um, the domo the domo and then domo America, and then we have domo. one set which Mr. is in eternal arishim's arishim's shadow which is this big red dude um, He's a celestial. with six yeah. eyes, some kind of a celestial. So I assume, I would, I think a celestial would be pretty cool, you know, uh, for I'd a chase. Cool. It'd be really Obviously, cool to see a celestial as a single base. Yeah. Um, some Pacific Rim type uh Yeah, maybe not the best there. way to do it, but again, no. it'd, be, it'd be at least interesting. Yeah. But yeah, that's the Eternals. Um, out of <laughs> Out of all the Disney Plus stuff, and, and here's the thing, people that might argue saying, well, they've never done Disney or TV shows before. Well, Lego just released a random minifigure line for about the same price. It's five dollars a thing for a Lego minifigure. I think it's like four or five dollars a thing for these two. Um, but and it was a mixture of what if um it was a mixture of what if uh shows, right? So like Loki, WandaVision, Falcon Winter Soldier. And it was like two or three characters from each show, right? Which I think if Marvel's okay with Lego doing that, I don't know why Marvel didn't push for that for WizKids to make it. I really hope, I really want to take any blame off WizKids. I hope that they don't choose the no. sets. Because if, so cause the if thing, they yeah. chose the Eternals of between, and I don't even, I'm not even excited for Shang-Chi, but at least it has cool people, you know, Shang-Chi, the Mandarin, um, whatever, right. Abomination apparently, Wong. Or Spider-Man, which could have all sorts of stuff. Obviously, I don't think they'd be able to make a Spider-Man set because if you don't know, WizKids makes these sets before the movie comes out. They release typically two weeks before the movie comes out. In Black Widow's case, over a year before the movie comes out. Um, but uh, they don't they don't watch the movie. They they literally get no insight, basically, whatsoever. Think, yeah, they get, they get a character they make a list set. and maybe a small synopsis. Yeah. Because um, like, it's rough. If, if yeah, you look like, at... We didn't um, have certain a certain pets, in the, um, the Ragnarok movie. Right. Um, we yeah. We didn't have... What did we have? We had Valkyrie, Thor, Hulk, <laughs> Valkyrie, Thor, Hulk, Odin, Loki. Yeah. And then we had one other character. Oh, Heimdall. We Heimdall, didn't get, yeah. We didn't get Korg. We didn't get Meek. We didn't get Scourge. Uh, I mean, we had Hela. We had the wolf. Fenris, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah there's and, yeah, an was absolute rough. ton of stuff that we didn't get. And that's one of the more recent movies. Um, and then Black Besides, Widow, like Black Widow or yeah, Captain we, Marvel. Uh, I think Captain Marvel had the, you know, had the most unique characters in that set. Now, obviously, though, they didn't know what each character was going to do in it because Ronan is like this big bad in the in Guardians, but he he just shows up, says five words, and that's it in Captain Marvel. But he's like one of the best incarnations of Ronan is from the Captain Marvel movie set, you know, like so they kinda had to make like they kind of go based off of, from what I can tell, how they act in comic books. So a lot right. of these eternals might have some kind of simple traits or powers, um, but they'll be very comic based. So like Mantis from Guardians Two, she had no mind like no mind control powers or anything like that at all and like that's all she does in guardians right 
Um, but she had like charge combat reflexes, close combat expert, because that's what she normally does. She's a martial artist in the comics more so because that's kind of what her guardians of the galaxy comic set version looked like. So I think nine times out of 10, whiz kids just sort of going to base this off of, uh, <laughs> the comics and then maybe add some flair from what they can tell from trailers, honestly, because they, they don't know much more than we do and they have to make a complete set of figures and balance it somehow, you know? So it's, it's tough. It's really tough on their end. I, I've said this before, but I think I'm okay with getting a set six months later. I don't know how long it takes to make a hero quick set, but obviously this is a smaller set, but I'd be okay with getting a set six or seven months later. Um, and have it be accurate, but maybe that's something that like Marvel or DC, they want them to come out before the movie to build up hype, like how most action figures come out before a movie, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's what they have to work off of. It's just that it's just how like action figure companies get images where it's like not the most accurate costumes. Like it's still like concept art. And then they make an action figure based off that. And the movie comes out and it's like, oh man, he had blue sneakers, not yellow or whatever, you know, like the same happens. But in this one, <laughs> they can't make accurate representations because they have to make game f pieces that are based on their powers, their abilities, um, their alignments, whatever. And they can't do that properly without having seen their powers, abilities, whatever in action. So once again, this is just all to say the figures probably aren't going to be very accurate to the movie or they'll be very plain. Um, and that's just whiz kids trying to do the best they can um, because they don't have the full information. And that's us. That's not us sucking whiz kids toes either. We uh, we're just giving like fact of the matter is I, I give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to movie sets, just because they don't get to see the movie. It's hard. Like if you told me to like, design something based on a movie i haven't seen and just based on like the look and like a trailer that's like near impossible to get it accurate after once the movie comes out you know so it is it is what it is i'm not gonna buy any of it because i don't care about the eternals um it's like the least excited i am for like literally anything marvel related not even marvel anything superhero related so i'm gonna skip this set even if there's good figures in it i will still probably not own them just like how i don't own anything from black widow so simeon uh any last final thoughts on the eternals here no um but also yes uh, i just i i hope that the movie's really good and i hope that these figures are also good because um just looking at them it seems like sculpt wise it's like we have running pose, we have sword pose, we have support power pose, we have laser arm man, we have laser eye man, we have uh, lady just standing there. So, like, just based off the poses, I can guess what kind of powers and abilities each one of these characters is going to have, and yeah. it's not making me super excited. Um I really hope that they come out with like the dials sometime soon. And uh, we also don't know. I don't think they listed what date they're looking at releasing these, but um, yeah, who knows? I just hope it does well because man, I really don't want to be disappointed. And I really don't like it when whiz kids makes like a bad product that no one buys because it makes them more tentative to like, just not make as many, outside the box kind of things and i don't like that i, I like it when whiz kids makes like the rest in peace set and stuff like that oh yeah that that'd be awesome i would but... i would really like another rest in peace set or you know wwe wave two but yeah that would be <laughs> yeah that would be neat but yeah. uh, all right so i mean there's there's one more little thing for news here it's just a little quick update you want to want to drop that on us here uh yeah so it's going to be in regards to... Uh... Oh, sorry. Let me cut you off. My bad. Um, I don't know if we said it or not, but Eternal's tentative release date is going to be October 2021 for the for the Gravity Feed. Uh, My bad. 20, All right. 2021. Uh, yeah. Speaking of release dates, good old Empire is now slated for a November release um, as of now. So could be pushed back to like December. Of course, it was originally going to be... I believe September. They were thinking like towards the end of oh, September. Really? Wow. Um, so it's already been pushed back. But since 
Rise and Fall was pushed back. It only kind of makes sense that they push back Empire. Um, to be honest, I'm looking forward to Empire way more, so it hurts more than I really didn't care how far they pushed X-Men Rise and Fall back, to be honest. But uh, Empire, I, yeah, I didn't care either. kind of want to see. Um, uh, I'm know. okay with it. I'm probably just as excited as you are, for sure, um, for Empire. But uh, I'm cool with the November release. Because it gives us like two months to breathe, plus an eternal set in October. So it We've gives us this seen... September to breathe and play with X Men Rise and Fall. Like, so I'm okay with that. You We've know, only seen um, five dials and sculpts. Uh, well, we've seen more sculpts, but we've only seen five dials from yeah. Empire. And it, what's weird is we've actually seen a few from uh, War of the Realms, which comes out sometime probably We've seen one. We've seen one from War of the Realms. It's calm down. It's calm I mean, down. It's not, still. It's a four. That was it. It's not that big of a deal. I guess it was the LE. So, you know, uh, but yeah, you know what um, Hero Click set that's supposed to release in, uh, in September that we haven't seen any dials for, Simeon? <laughs> I don't know. No. Apparently, apparently a, cer- a certain uh, wrestling entertainment related set. Uh, that is apparently going to release here in September. Um, we haven't seen any dials for that. Anyways, I'm gonna anyways, have to kidnap I, uh, Vince McMahon. I digress. Not unlike how Stone Cold did back in uh, what was it like '98. I will have to kidnap Vince McMahon yeah. by knocking out his limousine driver and hey. uh, driving off with him to ask him where Vince, where, where. Let them make it, Vince. Let them make it. That's some good shit, you know. Give like the let's... kids what they want, Vince. Come on, Vince. Let them do it. Ah, uh, so it's heartbreaking. It really is. It uh cuts deep. Boy, it cuts real deep. Come on, Vince. Please just give me them WWE figures. I don't care if you've released Wyatt. Wyatt Wyndham. What's his face? I don't know. Bray. I don't Wyndham. care. <laughs> it, his Wyatt real name's like Wyndham. I don't know. Just leave it alone. Okay. Uh-huh. Ah. Anyways, anyways, that's the news. Very, very cool. All right, we got uh, we got some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens. First up, a lot of them are from Discord, and if you want to join our Discord, you can do so by supporting the show at Patreon dot com so patreon.com slash dial h for hero clicks we give away all sorts of cool stuff every single month i recently got a ton of modern age and golden age figures that i'll be using for giveaways coming up here so we got some chases we got some super rares all sorts of great stuff coming up i plan on giving away the majority of my rise and fall brick and if you were listening earlier you know that's not necessarily to get too excited for but still it is it is something uh so that'll be cool uh we also do tokens every single time a set comes out there are figures that are like give somebody a broken ground token or something weird like that where it's like oh i guess i just use a dice to represent that or something no 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 more lame dice to represent what should be a really cool token old sandwich tokens yeah you didn't get that many old sandwich tokens dice only got six sides how many dice they want you to keep with you that's ridiculous Instead, you can uh, support Dial H for here who's at Patreon.com, and we will send you tokens every single month if you join at $5 or higher. $5 gets you one token every single month and a sticker. Uh, no, it's uh, $7 gets you a token every month and a sticker and a few other fun things. Uh, everything lets you join the Discord. Uh, $10 a month, you get three tokens every month and a sticker. 15 you get six tokens every month and a sticker. At $25, you will get six tokens every month, a sticker, and... Uh, you will get a t-shirt every other month uh, for as long as you are uh, a member. So that's really cool. So if you want some Dial H t-shirts, we have some actually really cool t-shirt designs as well uh, that people can enjoy. But these tokens include things like the Deadpool slice of cake, the goodie bag. Um, We also do pogs. And, you know, everybody hates to lay down some generic random token to represent their bystander figure. No, instead, your allied and German soldiers are going to be looking pretty fresh as Simi and I are the uh, are the box or the art for these uh, bystanders made uh, by one of the patrons in our discord Luke. So we really appreciate all the hard work that he does to make these really cool token designs for everybody. Uh, And we, we also just have a fun time 
uh, doing that. So if you do want to do all this stuff, guys, you can do so by joining our Patreon.com. And of course, that helps support the show and we do monthly giveaways. And every dollar you donate is an entry to the giveaway. So it's pretty awesome. So big Patreon plug over. I already did a YouTube plug, but our first comment, uh, we're going to... We're going to get to our Patreon ones here in a second, but it's from Ethan Beck on YouTube. Uh, and he's basically curious about what we think about how cheap, point cost-wise, all the figures are nowadays. His last couple sets for Sealed, uh, he's been able to open both boxes and play every single figure in them. Uh, he says it doesn't really make an interesting meta if Sealed is all a local game store does. When the Spider-Man set, he played every single figure from both boosters, and he had 10 points left over, which is crazy. So... Um, basically, I think, first of all, I think if all your game store does is sealed, I would drop them pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. I, I, I ain't about paying 30, 40 bucks every single time I come in sealed is fun. I'll do sealed once a month, twice a month, but not twice a month, every single month, you know, something like that. Like it's, you know, once a month is good. And maybe if there's a pre-release or a set coming out twice a month is fine, but I ain't playing that much sealed. I ain't about spending that much freaking money chill out there all right game store you'll you'll get my money eventually right chill out uh but no like especially the uh future foundation set with all the sidekicks being like 10 15 points 20 points maybe you know like i didn't want to play sealed of that set it looked miserable to me now that's classic two booster sealed i think no matter what every set is is fine for a battle royale because that doesn't matter what your point total you're building to um but yeah, a lot of these figures have been really rough to play sealed. I think specifically Spider-Man, Future Foundation, and uh, what's it called? Wonder Woman have been probably the worst sets for a yeah. non-team sealed I feel building like, of it. Just because of how yeah. low cost the figures are. Wonder Woman will get a pass for me because seven of the mm -hmm. commons or yeah, seven of the commons were generics they were uh generic sidekicks which i actually like to see in a set and they're good filler the problem is if your packs are if three out of the five figures you pull are commons and you know m the majority of those are or half of the commons in the set are these 20 point generics it's going to be real hard to build around that to like make that like any kind of semblance of like a decent team, but I'll give wonder woman a pass because those were generics future foundation. On the other hand, the, a lot of like the commons and uncommons were the, the kids, the sidekicks. And so you had a lot of 20, 10, 15, a lot of like yeah. really low pointed figures. Um, I think, yeah, like some of like the highest point, uh, not even sidekicks, but some of the highest point um, common kids were like the power pack and they're, you know, <laughs> yeah. five some points yeah. like that. Uh, and of course, you know, there, there was like Ant-Man who was 75 points with a really long dial. There was some stuff that kind of filled out future foundation, but man, I know when I pulled for future foundation, I played all but one figure. Um, and, you know, I wasn't playing everything at full dial, but like my Jim Hammond is 35 points. Um, and then like all my, all my little sidekicks and stuff were in the, like the twenties and stuff. And then I had like a Spider-Man that was maybe 40 points or something. So it was just a lot of really low point stuff. And it's possible to just pull that bad. I'll say like that bad where you have to use everything, but it's also possible where in the wonder woman set, you could pull, um, like Superman, who's got a 275 point dial and 125 right, point yeah. dial for a common, uh, or you know Gorilla Grodd as your un uncommon who has a 150 point dial and a 75 point dial. So it was definitely possible to pull higher point characters. It's just uh, when the set as a whole is seeded with like really cheap pieces, which is good for constructed. It makes it very strange for sealed. Um, so yeah, like I I tend to like when sets have the lower point cost, but I I have to agree that when it comes to sealed, it becomes a very weird feeling. It's almost like you need three boosters to build to three hundred. Um yeah. we did that 
man, what set was it that we, I think we did that with Nick Fury agents of shield because there were so many generics in that set that there was, you know, it was possible to pull two boosters and not be able to build using everything, not be able to build to a full 300. So we did three boosters. Another like rough part about Nick Fury though, is that sometimes if you pull the Hulk buster piece, I mean, that took up a figure slot yeah. that was like a 10 or five point, like whatever piece, right. you know? Yeah. You're clearly like, not oh, going to, there were some people that wanted to play, they'd pull like the dial and they'd be like, well, can I play it without like the rest of the pieces? And I'd just be like, mm, no, because like it just One, it was it very unfair because uh, oh, yeah. that specific set was just very like small figure based for the most part, with the exception of like three of the super rares. Um, but yeah, otherwise you could pull like the Iron Man, you could pull the Hulk, even the Steve Rogers those were all like really high pointed characters and you would yeah have some points on your team and then like the cur was all real low pointed stuff yeah i think like the best balance for cur i think the best sealed set in modern right now and this is coming from a person who had absolutely terrible experiences every time he played this sealed uh but that has to go with captain america and the avengers i think there's only three four generics in total in that set there's Two shield, shield generics. There's the there's agent four, and then there's, there's the new clone. Uh, shield, new yeah, clone, agent officer, spy. new clone, and then there's spy. I think that's it. Is there another one? There's no hydra generics, which sucks. Is but, like, sidewinder uh, a generic? Because he no, he's like not. It. He is. He's cheap, but uh, no, he's actually the leader. Also, of the, Happy uh, Hogan, I believe, is a generic. Oh, he also is really cheap. Um, but still, even in then. Like, there's 100 point, 95 point, 65, whatever, like, points, uncommons and commons, right? Um, so I don't think out of two boosters, you're going to not be able to play a 300 point team, you know, because there is no 10 point. I mean, there's there's still, you're right, Happy Hogan is crazy cheap. He's a 20 point figure, but there's no 10 point figure. Um, yeah. But I yeah. Think the most balanced, and this is getting a little off track, but. I think like, the most balanced uh, sealed sets I've seen are the ones where the rares in sealed outpace mm -hmm. like the super rares. Like the super rares are good for constructed, but like maybe you need stuff from other sets to really make them work. Um, yeah. Like the Mandarin in uh, the Captain America in the Avengers set. Right. Yeah. Clearly a good figure for constructed inside the set. He can't use his rings, so he's not doing a whole lot other than what's printed I... on his card. I always think it's funny when I go to a sealed, and I know we are getting on a tangent, um, but then people ask, oh, hey, I've got the Mandarin rings. Can I use them? And it's like, well, no. Yeah. They weren't in your booster. Did or you or uh, like in Batman the Animated Series, people are like, oh, can I use a location bonus? Like, well, no, you can't pay or for that. Like, uh, You're getting a booster. Like, but yeah, but I can, but I can use the map. And it's like, sealed. no. And uh, somebody allows somebody to use a location bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Goodness gracious. <laughs> what a joke. But anyways, <laughs> uh, thank you, Ethan, uh, for giving us that question. Moving on to our Discord Patreon questions here. Uh, Cody asks, what's a format you would like to see WizKids recognize? I'd like to see something like Constructed Tag Team Battle, where you and your partner square off against another pair. So would that be like a mini teams where it's like, by pair, Simeon and I play a game versus whoever, Lucas and Kevin, but it would be like A player, so Calder and Lucas versus Simeon, B player, you know, Kevin and Simeon, or do you want them to be both on the same map or and then like on the same team and then you tag out? Like, that's just kind of curious. Uh, there was an event played like that one time, and that was kind of interesting. Um, but Simeon, do you have a uh, official... Uh, kind of a different format that you'd like to see WizKids recognize? I would just like to see a non-300 format. So I'd like to, like, for silver, if they made the, like, the most consistent silver format, if they made it 400 silver age. Um, or if they just made a, you know, Highlander, like 500-point Highlander modern or something like that, where it's a very simple variation, but like a vastly different point cost because we get a lot of characters that have higher point costs and never get used because it ends up being like a one man army tent pole situation. Whereas, uh, in like a 500 point setting, 200 point dark sides, less than half your build 
and you can have an entire other threat on your team rather than just him. Um, so I'd really like to see them push just different point values um, to play at rather than completely different builds. But that being said, I do enjoy the uh, the 2v2 game or 2v2 tournaments where it'll be um, you can't like share any kind of figure or element game element on the oh, two yeah. teams. Those I find really interesting. Uh, it doesn't always because the meta is fairly diverse. You can have two pretty like stereotypical teams. Like one person could run yeah. Secret Six, and one could run uh, I like don't know. Justice League or something. You sure. know, robots yeah. even. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, something that's like completely different. Um, and then it becomes kind of like a rock paper scissors match situation where it's like, did you? put your a team on like the right spot and go yeah. against like the right other a team or you know did it end up becoming robot versus robot at some point those kind of things uh all right next up alex the enchanter says when hero clicks in the hopefully different uh distant post-apocalyptic future becomes how so he's saying in an apocalyptic future hero clicks becomes how all disputes are settled he thinks like how in Yu-Gi-Oh, the fate of the universe uh can be settled with card games. How would you use your content creator clout to influence the world? First of all, um, he assumes we have clout, that of which I haven't yes. been able to find any. I don't know about you, Simeon, um, but clout is not something we are um, resource abundant <laughs> with, I don't think. Um, no, maybe I would, if... I would say no. Yeah. No, and I think uh, if Heroclix did get bigger, I don't think we get clout. Because then the more people that play it, the more obsolete yeah, the casualness of Heroclix becomes, sadly. Right. Uh, but then um, I will say, for I don't the think awesome there's content a ton of, we make. There's not a ton of, like, casual magic content creators out there. Right. At least yeah, it, not that I yeah. like, are pushed to the top. Instead, magic is very much this uh, cringy, um, who's the best you can be, or whatever. Like, so it's lame. Uh, not to talk smack about, of course, other cool stuff ink sponsor, Magic Mike's, um, which is just, now that I say that out loud, what a terrible name for a podcast. Oh, my gosh. Did it come out Anyways, before or after the movie? Uh, gosh, I hope before. I never, I literally never put that together ever in my entire life. And I, wow, <laughs> wow. Anyways. I would use my clout uh, if so in this theoretical uh, situation, we're also going to theoretically say we have clout. Um, I would use it. Uh, I think if we say it's more of a Hunger Games or Running Man type scenario, I think PJ Bolin and Scott Crampton are the hosts of that type thing. Like if there was a Hunger Games or whatever, they would be like the hosts in charge of it. It'd be like the newscasters being like, oh, Scott Porter just murdered, you know, Adam Friedman with a Jack's pizza <laughs> and choked him to death or whatever, right? But, yeah. you know, I guess we're playing Hero or Hero Cook, so whatever, sure, you know. Sure. That's that's what they would probably do. I would like to think that uh because we we are we're so we're so elevated, <laughs> it's gonna sound so stupid. We are so elevated to the point that we are uh you know how like in the future how there's like fallout, it's like bottle caps or whatever. Right. I yeah, think yeah. for the sheer amount of tokens and stickers we've printed, um, that becomes the currency. That's, that's the currency of the world. Yeah, our, it's our like clout becomes all, like we're our, the our of clout money. becomes the currency, and then I think we own the Omaha, Nebraska, Lower Dakota area. That's like our section of the wasteland. Oh, sure. And so, like, we're in charge of that. And this is where the casual hero clicks players go for refuge, uh, who don't want to die in the uh crazy hero clicks games for competitive <laughs> players and we're and we're more so hero yeah, games, yeah. yeah none of that two men enter one man leaves type business instead we we in this crazy post-apocalyptic world foster um a beautiful community but then we're just good enough competitive players to keep out any ruffians yeah. that might try and wreck anything that's 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 my post-apocalyptic scenario for us you know yeah like the Alexandria um, of the apocalypse. So if if we are, let's see. So we're not like the the makers of Hero Clicks. We are we're content creators that are helping form the idea of what this post apocalyptic 
future uses yeah. to settle disputes. So I'm trying to, yeah, it's like, I, I guess we could go fully evil and be like, old man Jenkins is trying to like claim a deed to this here land. Uh, then we like, you know, we use our, our precision podcasting skills to convince old man Jenkins that, I don't know, um, Mil- Look, we're going to have Melter to roll off. from Captain America and the Avengers is like the best rare ever. And so oh, he no. plays that and we're like, ha, oh, no. you fool. Instead, we played this. I don't know. Something. Why like do we that. have to be Wastelandic <laughs> con men, <laughs> Simeon? I don't know. What is this? What is this deception that we apparently partake in? I wow. just really need the land that old man Jenkins. <laughs> He's oh, got, man, Jenkins he's got, got prime hero books real estate. Yeah, he's got a lot of stickers and bottle caps. He's Action got token. like an untapped well of only slightly irradiated well water. Oh, yeah, that's that good stuff. All right. I hope, hope that somehow uh, satisfied your answer. I think we'd lose a lot of listeners once I went bald from all the all the irradiated. Oh, water that's drink. that's the big that's the big one. If you go bald, we're done. Yeah. Done, Simeon. No one wants to. No see one wants to see a bald, hairless beardless, Simeon. Bald man. Oh, oh, beardless bald man. Oh, I wouldn't shave the beard though. I shave like my head, but I'd keep the beard like patchy, keep the beard. so you could see. Oh no, falling out. Yeah, They're just like normal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like normal. that was mean. Oh, oh, that was mean. Gross. Simeon's got a nice beard. It's not that I would think that. But, uh, anyway, it's really Duck Dynasty length right now. It's getting real close getting to some there. Duck Dynasty uh, level beards here. Almost some Kevin Nelson length of beard going on here. Oh, it's Kevin Nelson daring to have a longer beard than me? <laughs> We're going to have to like settle a dispute via hero clicks. Yeah. Whoever wins like gets to shave the other's beard. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Ooh. I, I don't know if I want to... If that's the winner, I don't know if I want either of you to lose. No offense, but uh, I've never, I mean, I've seen, I guess I've seen you without a full, full beard. I don't think I've ever seen, no, I guess I have seen Kevin without a beard. Never mind. I, I've just known him with a beard. I've known you both with fuller beards for over a year and a half to two years now. So it's weird to think, but I did both, I guess I did know you and you shaved down to Nalder Kess. And then I did know Kevin when he was clean shaven. That's kind of crazy to think about. Anyways. Anyways, uh, last little question here. Izone Bill says, of all the current popular like meta competitive Heroclix teams, which one do you think is the easiest for a new player to run? Oh, that is a good question. Wow. Um, I so don't let's do, think. Let's do like a quick wow. like, tally of. Yeah, what let's write we down. Consider meta popular. So like, a, right. there are things that work in the meta. So that I mean, aren't popular. Yeah. So to go with that, I'll say like the Krakoan revival, Krakoan revival, like maggot yeah, team that, though. is not a popular. It is competitive. It can win. It is not one of like the popular builds. Um, anything that has a lot of like moving parts like that, where you have to really be good on timing and maggot is just so intricate with being able to know like, whether to pop out eeny or meeny and then absorb it again, making sure that like you're not leaving yeah. it on the board. So that instantly is going to be out for me. Um, really? Robot, okay. What do you um, think? Like, is robot like well, one of the ones that's easy? So, like, so here's like what I'm thinking. Post rise and fall, I think robot's pretty easy. It doesn't change a lot with rise and fall, but it just. The things that make robot good, like a Mazo and Sabretooth and whatever, die to a gene. They don't die to a gene bomb, but it, it puts them on way worse stats, you know, because oh, it's yeah. not damage from an attack. So, like that really screws up robot. But I think if a new player wants to do well, I think robot is a good keyword for a new player to try to play. Obviously, so when we say this for new player, just keep in mind, none of this is going to be cheap for a new player no, uh, to acquire and play how uh, easy piloting, it is for them yeah. to run the team. I don't think Latveria is easy to run. Uh, any version of Latveria. I think anything that has any swaps, so like any X Men swaps yeah. or any teams like that. I don't think that's good. Um, same with Fantastic Four. Same um, with Fantastic there are Four. Basic Latveria or Fantastic Four builds that could work, but yeah, the real strength in those come from knowing when you even, need to swap. And 
not to like toot my own horn or anything, but even like the team I ran, I wouldn't give to a new player. Even though it's like just TK, TK, charge or whatever, most of the time, I'm like, Jason does so much. Sky Tyrant does so much. There's so much you have to keep in mind um, with those figures that I wouldn't want any player to play them. I honestly, you know, I don't think uh, Megat drop off. I think trying to figure out how to absorb the Eni or Meanie, you know, and like some of that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's, it's like move up. I have a bunch of prob. Drop yeah. them, attack. I, I don't. I, I don't them. quite die. I don't think that's. I don't think that's also, crazy. Um, I, think, I don't think that's crazy complicated. Well, I've never played the, against um, it, so I don't really totally know. The Krakoan revival adds a different aspect yeah. to if it's not who you want to live, who you want to die. Version. If it's like yeah, an animal if, it's, version, if it's non, it's if it's animal, if it's animal, I think it's fine. I think any player can pilot um, that. Not to discredit people that have piloted it and won with it. I'm just saying, right? It's, it's one a new player could probably get the reins on. Uh, Secret Six, if, I mean, to be honest, they, we haven't seen that as much as I expected to, but I, that's again, it's one where I feel like to, to pilot it, it would be fine. Like Sky Tyrant has full speed charge, Scarab can target through objects, like all the things, uh, Commissioner makes the rookie and then you've got like Gigana Prime or whatever. Uh, I think it is easy enough to pilot to actually win with it. I don't know because... Well, if it was easy to win with it, we would have seen a lot more of it winning. But um, I honestly, I think for a new player to like really get a good grasp on it, they would have to know how to recognize obvious threats on the field and determine like which one is like the biggest, what they need to take out before, you know, everything happens. Because um, if you send, if you send like a Sky Tyrant across the board just to kill a like Dark Phoenix, you're you're probably not going to like the results. Yeah, it's not... Not that that's necessarily a bad choice. You should at least try to kill two things. Sky Tyrant. Eh. And to be fair, I in this game that I just uploaded to YouTube, I mean, I only did kill a, uh, a Dark Phoenix, just how the dice went, you know? Right. So, But, I mean, yeah, you also... Yeah, he was clumped, so you but, did. Uh, but I see, but I see what you mean. Across the um, where it's like, even you might have a team that could be easy to pilot. It's still going to be hard to figure out who to make the attacks against. Depending on you know, you still have to have a grander understanding of what is played right now and competitive to figure out what attack should be prioritized and everything else. So even if you have an easy team to play, quote unquote, easy team to play, right? or more simple team to play, it doesn't mean you're ready to play against a lot of other teams. I think so, um, when it comes to new player friendly, it should be teams that are... So because a lot of what we're saying is um, you don't want like these highly conv convoluted teams that uh, like a simple mistake means that you lose. Um, teams that are really forgiving. So that would be something like a monster or mystical team that has multiple Wendigos. Because sure. you can lose, I mean, depending on how many you play, you can lose like half your yeah. Wendigos or all but one of your Wendigos and still put a huge amount of damage on your opponent uh, with just like one or two. So Monster Mystical built around that kind of mechanic or multiple like Dr. Fates where you can blast people for tons of damage and stuff. Um, and then robot with like the don't die kind of thing is probably real solid for a newer player just because if you miss position and your opponent can get to you uh they're gonna do like at most one damage usually so that's fine um man yeah there's there's just not a lot uh even like your soldier team with uh scrolls uh, oh yeah Super scroll i i don't even think that's quite easy enough for like a newer player to grab because and, it's hard to not be it's hard to not like take a chance and just like hold that defensive strategy for longer because sometimes yeah. you just really want to like get like that hidden you know but i at the same time it is tough but i i do think that probably don't die style teams are probably the easiest for a new player to run because i know you know i've made uh 
sort of semi made my my sister play in a few hero clicks tournaments because she she is interested in the game um and at the same time um we didn't have a ton of time to like go over how it works and everything so i gave her you know very simple teams that could win even if she didn't do much you know uh so like we did 300 modern it was last year uh it was the latest set was what's it called spider-man So I just gave her full point uh, Nimrod in the boxing ring, and she was 20 points under, or yeah, 20 points under, and that was it. That was the whole team. And I was like, all you have to do is kill one person on their team, sit in the, uh, in the WWE ring, and reroll any really high attacks they get. You want them to hit you. You want them to hit you with a low attack roll, and then that was that was like the whole strategy. And she had like fun playing it, you know? And then in a different event, I gave, it was golden, and I gave her a bunch of don't die stuff. And she had fun playing that, too. I think she liked Nimrod a little bit more uh, for don't die, for sure. But I do, I do think that don't die is a solid way to do it. That scroll team, it is, you know, it's like simple enough, right? But whenever there's choosing powers, and it's at the beginning of your turn, and you kind of have to map out your turn in like less than a minute or two, so you don't take a long beginning of your turn... You kind of have to map out your your whole turn at the beginning and then do it and pick all your powers there. And then, you know, halfway through, you might realize, ah, oh, shoot, I should have, you know, chose different set of powers or something, you know how it is. So, yeah, even with that team, I, I still think a new player could probably figure out how to grasp it pretty quickly um, after, like, messing around with it for a few weeks. But oh, sure. not, like, yeah. right away. Just because, like, at the end of the day, it's just, like, I have a bunch of rollouts. I reduce penetrating damage. When yeah. we've kind of talked about this not before just... on different I... episodes, but um, you can take almost any build. Um, I mean, not any build, obviously, but you can take almost any build, and if you just practice it enough and keep tweaking it and keep practicing and tweaking and adding different stuff, trying different like additions and stuff, you can take pretty much any kind of team or start with any kind of team and eventually get somewhere where it's going to be mostly competitive like it'll be you know enough to win like a wko or at least compete in one without getting completely like trashed um now of course there's going to be like certain things that you'll never be able to build around like um i don't know probably never be able to build around like a 300 point figure uh i can't think yeah of like 300 point juggernaut you'll probably never be able to win a wko with that because no matter how you try and like, there's, there's just no tweaking to a two or to a 300 point juggernaut. Um, any really high point costed figure will usually get, uh, outpaced by smaller swarm stuff. But that being said, like, so there is an extent to which this doesn't work, but, um, there are plenty of weird little niche characters out there that you could probably make work like a, a red ghost drop off team isn't outside the realm of possibility. Is it going to be as good as Maggot? No. Is it going to be way cheaper? Yes. So, yeah. I mean... Well, all right. Bill, I hope that answered your question, my man. Uh, and that is going to wrap it up for this week's show. So if you guys want to support the show and not do so on Patreon, which is A-OK with me, you guys can leave an iTunes review, you know, subscribe on Spotify, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and whatever. Like I said, we're going to do unboxings. We do weekly gameplay videos. Um, we try to do other really fun hero clicks things where it's not just like regurgitating what previews came out this week or always talking about like 300 competitive or whatever. So... You know, definitely check out the YouTube. It's one thing that me and Simeon and I have just really enjoyed doing. We're, we're about to have a really fun tournament series uh, coming pretty soon to the YouTube channel. So I'm excited for that. Uh, but that is basically everything in the show. So go, guys. Go watch Go watch Shang-Chi. It's out this weekend. It's there. Or whatever. I don't know. You guys do whatever you want with your weekend. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not your mom. And if you want to pick up Shang-Chi... WizKids might have forgot to make one recently, but there sure are some Golden Age ones that you can find on CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.
Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they Six how people they think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, tax him. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.